Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade, coming to you live and direct from Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. I'm about to go and do my next interview with my big brother, Nick Cannon. I'm about to go and do my next interview with brother Nick Cannon. I'm about to go and head out and do my interview with brother Nick Cannon. But before I head over to council culture, before I head over to council culture, before I head over to council culture, I want to speak to you guys about a very serious issue in our community. And that is the issue of spiritually malnourished Africans. Spiritually malnourished Africans. See, a lot of people talk about high value and low value. A lot of people talk about high value and low value. A lot of people talk about high value and low value. I don't operate in the dichotomy of high value and low value. I don't operate in that dichotomy. I operate in the dichotomy when observing other Africans. I operate in the dichotomy of spiritually emancipated and spiritually malnourished. That is the continuum that I'm looking at you. That is the lens I'm using through which I'm looking at you. Are you spiritually emancipated or are you spiritually malnourished? Because if you are spiritually emancipated, I don't have to worry about trauma. I don't have to worry about jealousy. I don't have to worry about envy. I don't have to worry about selfishness. I don't have to worry about narcissism. I don't know. Have to, I don't worry about competition, attention seeking. When you are spiritually emancipated, spiritually emancipated. I don't have to worry about that. But when you are spiritually malnourished because you pay more attention to your career than your soul, spiritually malnourished, you pay more attention to the car you drive and the house you live in than the condition of your soul. Spiritually malnourished, you care more about hair and shoes and clothes and vacations and partying more than the condition of your soul. That's what matters to me. That's what matters to me. Spiritually malnourished Africans will never understand the worldview of a spiritually emancipated African. And if you are a spiritually emancipated African, if you are a spiritually emancipated African, it's going to be difficult for you to coexist with a spiritually malnourished African. You see. Spiritually malnourished Africans, they are trapped in a world of constantly craving attention and various needs and wants. Their whole life is about needs and wants. Fears and worries. Spiritually malnourished Africans, they care what people think about them. They care about how people see them. They care about how they come across to other people. Don't get me wrong. It's okay to have a little bit of a social IQ. It's okay to have a little bit of a social IQ, but when you are preoccupied with how you look to other people, when you're more concerned about how you look to other people than how you look to yourself, when the others matter more than you, when you care more about what they think than what you think, that's an issue. Some of you live in spiritually malnourished families. 
If you came from a spiritually malnourished family, this is a family that cares about how they look to the neighborhood, how they look in church, how they look to their co-workers. Children might can't stand them. Husband might can't stand the wife. Wife might can't stand the husband. Inside the house, it might be toxic and unhealthy, but as long as we look good to the world, as long as we look good to the world, as long as we look good to the world, that's all that matters. How many of you know people who got married because of how it looked to the world? They couldn't even stand each other. But she said, I'm pregnant and I can't afford to be out here with a baby not married to the man. And the man don't even like the woman, but he's worried about how he looks to his business partners and how he looks to his church. And so they go and get married and they don't even like each other because they care about how it looks to the world. Spiritually malnourished Africans. Let me say this to you. If you are on the spiritual journey, if you are on the spiritual path, and it don't matter what religion you use to get there. The road does not matter how well you walk the road. If you want to use the road of Islam to get back to divine oneness with the creator, if you want to use the road of Christianity to get back to divine oneness with the creator, if you want to use the Hebrew faith as your pathway to get back to divine oneness. If you want to be nation of Islam or God and earth or New Wapian or Seventh Day Adventist, Episcopalian, Methodist. Uh, if you want to be a Jehovah's Witness or if you want to create your own specialized spiritual program. Because I'm a very big fan of you creating your own specialized spiritual program. Whatever road you use to get back to divine oneness with the almighty, that's your business. Use whatever road you want to use. Use whatever road you want to use. But when you are on a spiritual path, you will care more about what you think, less about what the world thinks. When you are on a spiritual path, what people say about you, think about you, and do to you will begin to matter less. When you are on a spiritual path, you will become so detached from the everyday fears and anxieties and lusts and addictions of the world. You will begin to feel like an alien in outer space. You will become a spiritual alien because the things that send other people into suicidal rants and depressive episodes, the things that send other people into panic attacks, the things that send other people into bouts of hopelessness, it won't even matter to you no more. The more spiritually liberated that you become, the more spiritually liberated that you become, the more spiritually liberated that you become, the less what other people have matters, the less what other people think matters. The more spiritually liberated you become, the more peaceful you will become even around your enemies. Your enemies won't even understand you no more. The things they used to say that got under your skin don't even matter no more. When you become spiritually liberated, you stop holding grudges. There's no jealousy in you. There's no envy in you. And you don't lust after relationships, personal or romantic. When you start getting spiritually liberated, you're not lusting after relationships no more. 
personal or romantic, you are fine being your own company when you are spiritually liberated. You don't have to go to the club every day. You ain't got to go to half. Spiritually liberated people are the most peaceful people on earth. They have nothing to prove. Nothing to gain. But the problem. The problem is a lot of people who are close to spiritual liberation. A lot of people who are close to spiritual liberation have spiritually malnourished people in their lives that they care about. And one of the toughest things as a spiritually liberated African to do is to leave behind spiritually malnourished Negroes who don't want to grow. Your husband don't want to grow. Your wife don't want to grow. Your son, your daughter, your aunt, your uncle, your mother, your father, your best friends, your frat brothers, your sorors, your church family. They don't want to go. You're ready to go to the next level. You are knocking on the spiritual door of going to the next level of your God consciousness. But you got people you love who you don't want to leave. And so now you're about to sacrifice your spiritual growth. You got people you love who you don't want to leave. And now you're about to sacrifice your spiritual growth because you feel guilty. You feel guilty prioritizing your own spiritual needs. You feel guilty prioritizing your own spiritual needs. The only thing harder than growing up spiritually is giving up relationships that no longer serve you. The only thing harder than growing up spiritually is giving up relationships that no longer serve you because of guilt, shame and remorse. Those three demons have sucked the life out of more Africans than I can count. Guilt, shame, and remorse. You feel guilty because you're in a better place spiritually. You don't want to sit around and smoke weed all day no more. You don't want to sit around and get high no more. You don't want to hang out at the club no more. You don't need to go on vacation four times a year. You have grown. But you knew your best friend since kindergarten. You knew your best friend since second grade. His mother, her father took you into their home when you were homeless. They cared for you. They looked after you. And you appreciate them for what they did for you and your family at your time of need. But now. You are on the runway. You are on the runway to a higher spiritual takeoff and they don't want to come with you. And you like they did so much for me. I wouldn't be who I am right now without these people. Is it really acceptable for me to fly and not bring them with me? That's not the question you should be asking. The question isn't whether or not it's acceptable for you to fly and not take them with you. That's not the question. The question is. Are you willing to live with the fact God gave you an opportunity 
to reach another pinnacle of your spiritual existence and you turned it down. So you could cater to the wounds of a spiritually malnourished African. High value, low value, that means nothing to me. Are you spiritually liberated or are you spiritually malnourished? And then some of you have children who you raise to be addicted to things. You yourself are on the spiritual path, but your children have shamed you into letting them be raised by the demons of society. You are on the spiritual path. But your children are being raised by the demons of society because you're not strong enough. You're not strong enough to withstand the criticism of your children and other people in the neighborhood who says you should let us grow up worshiping merchandise and materialism. See, spiritual work is more than religious beliefs. Spiritual work is more than religious beliefs. Religion can be a bridge. Religion can be a destination. For some people, religion is a destination. That's where they're going to be forever, tied to their religion. Other people, it's a bridge. For me, the religion of Islam, a beautiful religion, it was a bridge. I had spiritual needs that that religion could not fulfill. It doesn't make anything wrong with the religion. It doesn't make anything wrong with me. But for my destiny in this life, for the spiritual nutrition that my soul required, I had to go beyond Islam. It was more I needed. The fasting, the prayers, the shahada, the charity, reading the Quran, the Juma, all that was beautiful. But my spiritual DNA needed more nutrition than I could suck out of that religion. Nothing's wrong with the religion. Nothing wrong with me. I needed something greater and I found it. Some of you are in the church. You crave something more than the church. You're like, this ain't enough for me no more. I need something deeper, more profound. I'm ready to talk to my ancestors. I'm ready to take the hand of my ancestors and let them lead me to God. I'm ready to take the hand of my ancestors and let them lead me to God. I'm ready to take the hand of my ancestors and let them lead me to God. But I feel guilty about leaving the church. I feel shameful about talking to the pastor about my ancestors are talking to me in my dreams. Guilt is a demon. Remorse is a demon. Shame is a demon. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing you need for your spiritual journey that can be found outside of you. Everything you need for your spiritual journey is inside. You don't need anything outside. When people start telling you you need something outside 
of yourself for the spiritual journey. They're trying to turn you into a dependent. You cannot be spiritually emancipated depending on his lessons, depending on that religion, depending on this book, depending on that congregation. Dependency is the antithesis of liberation. This is why religions cannot take you to spiritual emancipations. Religions bind you to dogma and doctrine and belief system. You need liberation. You don't get liberated through beliefs. You don't get liberated through doctrine. No. No. You got to give it all up to find God. You got to give it all up to find God. What you are seeking is already inside of you. But you keep looking outside of you. Another cup of coffee, another cup of tea, another Percocet. One more black and mild, one more blunt, one more blast to crack, one more shot of ass. You just need one more fix. And the reason one more is never enough. The reason one more time is never enough is because an addiction is never satisfied. An addiction is never satisfied. Brothers say, I'm going to marry my queen because if I marry her, she will stop being so needy and thirsty for my attention all the time. I'm going to put a ring on it. I'm going to put a ring on it. And once I put a ring on it, she'll stop being so thirsty. You are incorrect. She has an addiction. She has an unmet psychological need. You marrying her ain't changing nothing. No one suffering an addiction, by definition, can be spiritually liberated. I'm spiritually liberated, but I'm still addicted to these cigarettes. Then you're not spiritually liberated. When you're spiritually liberated, you need no thing. When you are spiritually liberated, you need no thing to be at peace. You need no thing to be at calm. You don't need nothing outside of you when you are spiritually liberated. When you see these religious leaders talking about, I found God, but I'm still addicted to crack. I found God, but I'm still addicted to food. I found God, but I'm still addicted to marijuana. I found God, but I'm still addicted to liquor. You haven't found God. You simply think you have. Do you know why the Buddhists and Buddha was a black man? You know why the Buddhists, strict traditional Buddhists, they don't have a job. They don't, they only, they don't work. A lot of them don't have homes. They live off mother nature and they only eat what people give them freely. They exist off charity. The reason why the Buddhists, why Buddha told his followers, go with what you have. Don't worry about tomorrow. He wanted to make sure they had no fear, no fear of want, because any fear is an obstruction from the spiritual path. So Buddha made sure. He said, y'all not believing in no religion. We're not building up no financial empire because Buddha said the only thing you can be guaranteed of in this world, the only thing you can be guaranteed of in this world is change and transformation. Everything changes. Everything transforms. 
everything changes. Everything transforms. So if everything changes and everything transforms, why are you not allowed to grow beyond the church? Why are you not allowed to grow beyond the masjid? Why are you not allowed to grow beyond the fraternity? Why are you not allowed to grow beyond the sorority? If, if the only thing we are guaranteed in this world is change, how can you be wrong for growing beyond your current level of consciousness, growing beyond your current way of thinking? How can you be wrong for growing beyond your current mode of acting? Growth is a law. God creates us. God sustains us. And God removes us. You are created. You are sustained. And then you are taken away. So being addicted to somebody, that's not healthy. Being addicted to your house, you can lose it. Being addicted to your car, you can crash it. Being addicted to your career, you can lose it. Attachments. Cravings. Wantings. I need this. I must have this. That means you must have misery. Wherever there is addiction, there is misery. Wherever there is attachment, there is misery. Whenever you got to have something, when you don't get it, you are miserable. Why do we have so much addiction in the African world? Why do we have so much addiction in the African world? Because black people are not ready to face their fears, their shames, or their sins. Black people are not ready to face their fears, their shames, or their sins. You smoking to distract. You dating to distract. You chasing money to distract. You chasing your business to distract. Anything you can touch can be taken away from you. Anything you can touch can be taken away from you. Your loved ones, you can touch them. They can be taken away from you. Your car, you can touch it. It can be taken away from you. Your business, you can touch it. It can be taken away from you. Nothing wrong with family. Nothing wrong with a nice car. Nothing wrong with your business. Nothing wrong with saving money. But when you are attached, attached, when you are addicted to your girlfriend, addicted to your husband, addicted to the fraternity, addicted to the car, addicted to the business, addicted to the money. It is the addiction that will be your downfall. Because everything transforms and is taken away from us. Every day you breathe, you closer to the day you will die. Every day you breathe, you closer to the day you will die. So the point is not to be morbid. The point is not to be pessimistic. The point is to say, since I really own nothing, because it can be taken away. If you can lose it, you don't own it. I got 25 properties if you can touch it, you can lose it. You really don't own it. It belongs to the universe. It belongs to the universe. You can lose it. You really don't own anything and you really don't control anything. When you embrace those two truths, you really don't own anything and you really don't control anything. When you understand that, you stop trying to control people. See, the reason we try to control is because we have no control. Y'all see that? The reason we try to control 
is we don't have no control. He always want to control where I go. He always calling my friends. He always coming to the job. He can't control you. Control is impossible. So he tries to over control you. Because he has a fear of losing you. We always try to over control that which we are afraid to lose. And the over controlling pushes the person out of your life anyway, because nobody wants to be a slave. Nobody wants to live in bondage to another people's needs. You don't own your life either. You can walk outside and get hit by a car. Your life is not yours. Everything belongs to the creator. Everything belongs to the universe. You're just passing on through. And when it's time for you to leave, you're going to leave everything you have behind. Nothing's going with you to the land of the ancestors. Nothing I have, nothing Oprah has, nothing Jay-Z has, nothing Bill Gates have, Joe Biden. Nothing is going with you. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the universe. And when you die, you will find that out. And the reason why nothing belongs to you, the reason why you don't really own nothing, the reason why you don't really control anything is you're not here for that purpose. African people are not sent to earth to buy things. You are here to serve and to solve. What did Jesus say in the Bible? And I'm not a Christian. But I respect all religious paths. Jesus said the son of man is not here to be served, but to serve. The greatest amongst you shall be your servant. You are here to serve humanity, to serve the universe, to serve the most high. service. My life and we can all get better. So, so can I service when your life is built on service you can overcome any challenge when you are really walking in your light so you got to find your light and walk in it. You're here to serve. How are you going to serve? We got a lot of black lawyers, but they're not really serving the people. They just hustling. We got black politicians, but they're not serving the people. They just hustling. We got black entrepreneurs, but they're not saving the people. They just hustling. We got black churches, but they're not serving the people. They just hustling. It is hard not to be blessed when you are of service to others. It is hard. It is hard not to be blessed when you are of service to others. But I'm going to tell you this. The closer you get to God consciousness, the more the devil will try to distract you. The devil is going to test you. Oh, you're going to be tested. The purpose of the devil is to get you to quit. The job of the devil is to convince you there is no such thing as peace of mind. The devil's job is to make you feel without that Fat booty over there, you ain't going to be happy. Without that big house, without that big car, without all them businesses, without this weed, without this syrup, without these Percocets, without these opioids, the devil's job is to make you think you need all this junk to be at one with the universe. That's the devil's job, and he's going to play all kind of tricks on you. 
He's going to send people. He's going to send demons to devil. You're not getting to God without a fight. The spiritual Super Bowl. You got to win the spiritual Super Bowl because when the devil kicks off that ball, you better be ready. Because his job is to stop you from getting to the gates. He going to use people in your family to sabotage your spiritual path. He's going to use your best friends to sabotage your spiritual path. He's going to take your car, your house, your job, everything you love. The devil is going to sabotage it to make you turn your back on supreme consciousness. What's wrong with my life? I'm losing everything that I own. What's wrong with my life? I'm losing everything that I own. Well, first of all, you never owned anything. Everything you have was on loan from the universe. That car was not yours. Every ingredient that went into that car came from the earth. That house is not yours. Every ingredient that went into the house came from the earth. You are not yours. Every atom and molecule in your body came from the earth. You own nothing. Mother Nature owns it all. And when she's ready to take it back, when you be when you start acting like you own something that was loaned, you don't own. This was a loan. Your body was a long term lease. Your family was a long term lease. Your business was a long term lease. Your home was a long term lease. You are not here to accumulate. You are here to. To emancipate. Life is not about how much I can get. Life is about how much I can give. How much I can do. How much I can evolve. You have a purpose. And the more space you have to live, the better your quality of life. The irony of rich people, the irony of the wealthy. And by the way, there's no correlation between wealth and happiness. There is no correlation between wealth and happiness. Money is a tool. Yes, we need money. Yes, we need money. Yes, we need money. Money is a tool to be used to build peace of mind and to help other people build peace of mind. But the the irony of the wealthy. Is there no more happier than anyone else? That's the irony of the wealthy and the reason they're no more happier than anyone else. If they haven't figured out the great riddle. You're not here to accumulate. You can't be happy owning all this and using none of it to help other people. It's impossible. If that's, that's not happening. Suffocation of your own soul, choking your own life force out of yourself. American capitalism, the belief that happiness is all about what you have. American capitalism, the belief that happiness is about what you own. American capitalism, belief that the more you get, the better you feel. There's no proof. There's no proof. This is why rich black people, if you notice, they have ADHD. Rich black people got ADHD. They always doing something. I'm throwing the party. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I bought this. I bought that. Have you noticed how hyperactive rich black people are? They never at chill. They've never chill mode. You got all this money, but you never chill. Why are you always going somewhere doing something? Because if they stop and sit down, 
Rich black people are scared of solitude. Rich black people are not interested in going into a room by themselves and just sitting there in the dark for a couple hours. They don't want to do that. Because if they sit down long enough, they will realize how unhappy they really are. See, the reason rich black people stay active, they have millionaires ADHD, is because they not happy at all. So they got to constantly distract themselves with cars and clothes and planes and parties and vacations because if they ever sat the hell still, all their problems would show right up in front of them. Running away from themselves, that's all they do. Party, 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 party. I've been to 30 parties in 30 days. 30 parties in 30 days? What are you running away from? Shopping every day. Why are you shopping every day? Because you're unhappy and you're trying to distract yourself from yourself. Now, rich, rich people can't tell you they're unhappy because that would destroy the whole illusion. Rich people can't tell you they're unhappy. That would destroy the illusion. They got to act happy even when they're miserable. They had to act happy even when they were miserable. So to my brothers and my sisters out there. To my brothers and my sisters out there. Look for spiritually emancipated people. I don't need a fat ass. I don't need big breasts. I don't need a woman with six degrees. I need a woman who is at peace with herself. A spiritually emancipated woman. That's what you need out here. This is your brother King Kong Consciousness. From Los Angeles, California. About to go take care of this interview with my brother Nick Cannon. Council culture, Dr. Umar and Nick Cannon coming at you real soon. Peace and Pan-Africanism.